Hello everybody, this is Chad, and I uh, see a lot of talk with on the internet when it comes to the after effects of monetary policy. What I want this video to be about is results of what has occurred, what's occurring, and where we're going to head from now, and also why it's not out of the ballpark to see gold and silver prices go to astronomical levels. This is nothing more than history repeating itself. So let's get into it. And the gold standard, on the onset of the war, U.S. corporations had large debts payable back to European entities who began liquidating their debts in gold. With debts looming to Europe, the dollar to the British pound exchange reached uh, as high as $6.75, uh, far more than gold's parity of $4.86, uh, call it 87 cents. Basically what this means is that for where we currently stand, this is massive debts to the world that the U.S. debt load to where we have to pay back. Within the current exchange rates, this is imperative that the U.S. dollar's purchasing power is going to decrease. In order to defend the exchange value of the dollar, the U.S. Treasury Department authorized state and nationality chartered banks to issue emergency currency under the Altridge Verdland Act and newly created Federal Reserve Organization of Fund to assure debts to foreign creditors. All they're basically doing with this is in fact saying that we're making our debts good and payable back to you. In a sense, we're exporting our inflation to them. And this is no more than a bullying act by the United States government and in conjunction with the Federal Reserve System. During the participation of the U.S., and the belligerent President Wilson banded gold export, thereby suspending the gold standard for foreign exchange. After the war, European countries slowly returned back to their gold standards through a somewhat altered form. Under the Gold Reserve Act, this is information I had pulled up. For foreign exchange purposes, the $20.67 per ounce value of the dollar was lifted, allowing the dollar to float freely in foreign exchange markets with no set value. It's basically meaning that gold can fluctuate freely because we're not on a gold standard right now. Uh, the Agriculture Adjustment Act, or basically monetization, purchase program, stimulus, bailouts, quantitative easing one and two, and maybe soon to be three, is nothing more than kind of a form of this Agriculture Adjustment Act years ago. Uh, however, this did not prove popular. So instead, the next political, politically popular option was to devalue the dollar on the foreign exchange markets. Okay, now is not commodities priced in dollars? A little something to think about. Under the Gold Reserve Act, the value of the dollar is fixed to $35 per ounce, making the dollar more attractive for foreign buyers and making foreign currencies more expensive to those holding U.S. dollars. So basically, this is no more than a system of Bretton Woods basically bullying the world saying hey you have no other alternative so you must accept dollars which is eventually and as we speak causing a currency war. The higher price increased co conversion of gold into dollars allowing the US to effectively corner the world gold market because we are on a gold standard at this time. We are not on a gold standard right now and this includes silver okay so the prices can become unlimited this is the key. Under the post-World War II Bretton Woods system, all currencies were pegged to the U.S. dollar and were thus the world reserve currency, such as they are now. Nothing's changed. The U.S. government, Federal Reserve, to maintain the U.S. stability causes, it's causing problems uh, in the conversion to foreign currencies caused economic and trade pressures, okay, and currency wars, right? This is what we're going through right now. This is by the early 1960s, compensation for these pressures started to become too complicated to manage. Okay? This is history. This will repeat itself. In March 1968, the effort to control private market price of gold was abandoned. Okay? Meaning that those are, are commercially shorting at a massive scale right now were unable to maintain the price in this current status quo to make sure paper currencies or fiat based currency today is remain maintains the status quo okay a two tier system began at this point in time and the system all central bank transactions of gold were insulated from the free market price 
Central banks would trade gold among themselves at $35 an ounce, but would not trade with the private market. Okay, In a sense, this is kind of going on right now. It's basically the commercial shorts versus the private market. Commercial shorts always try to get the other upper hand and smash those in the private market. This is what they refer to as a gold and silver manipulation in a sense. Private market could not trade, the private market could trade at the equal labor and market price, and there would be no official intervention, such as they're not, there's no intervention today. There's manipulation, but no official intervention yet. And I'll say yet because you never know what's going to happen. But the price immediately jumped from $43 per troy ounce. The price of gold briefly touched back to $35, just like we've seen silver did, right? In February 2010, down to $15 an ounce, nearly end of 1969 before beginning a steady price rise once again. Haven't we not seen that? This gold price increase turned steeply through 1972 and hit a high that year of $70 per troy ounce, basically doubled the price. Haven't we not seen that? Right? And I'm particularly referring to in silver because silver is massively manipulated, such as gold is too. But the supply amounts, obviously, of silver, it's no surprise to everyone, it's extremely tight right now in, in accordance to gold. By the time floating exchange rates had begun, begun to emerge, okay, floating exchange rates, foreign markets, which indicated the de facto dissolution of the Bretton Woods system. Isn't that what we're starting to see or at least foresee in the very foreseeable future? Basically, people wanting to have floating foreign exchange rates and exchanges. The two-tier system was abandoned in November 73. So from 68 to 73, most all this had taken place. But then the price of gold had reached $100 per troy ounce. Okay, from 35 to 100. Okay, that's basically where we're at now in price exchange wise. In the early 1970s, inflation caused by rising prices for imported commodities, especially oil, Aren't we not at the very beginning tail of this? And spending on the Vietnam War, aren't we still going through three different wars, right? Which was not counteracted by cuts in government expenditures. Isn't that not true today? Combined with trade deficits, which is true today, to cause a situation in which the dollar was less than gold used to back it, right? Even though we aren't on a gold standard, the US dollar is no more than a derivative of different problems going on in the world, so people go to the US dollar because that's the only reserve currency there is in so called a stability play, right? So, carrying on, in 1971, Pre President Richard Nixon unilaterally ordered the cancellation of direct convertibility of the United States dollar to gold. This act, was also, this act was also known as the Nixon shock. The sudden jump of the price of gold after central banks gave up controlling it was a strong sign of the lo loss of the confidence of the US dollar. Is this not what we're starting to get into right now, folks? Right? In the abundance of a gold market valued US dollar, investors were choosing to continue putting their faith in actual gold and silver, right? Aren't they doing that today? You hear stories about that all the time, don't you? Consistently, the price of gold rose from $35 per troy ounce in 1960 to almost $900 in 1980. Okay, this is nothing more than historical facts, folks. Where we started with the 200 to 5, 5 to 8, 1980 at 900, if you basically take that variation from $35 per troy ounce of 69 to $900 in 1980, that's more than a tenfold increase. This is history, this is facts, it could, it's going to happen again. I'm just simply telling you, based upon historical facts, what's going on, and playing that in with the tidbits that I had put together here. Shortly after the gold price started and its ascent in the 1970s, the price of other commodities such as oil began to rise. This is where we currently are, at the very tail beginnings of this. Everyone heard about the massive inflationary pressures in 1970. Well, that's shortly coming our way in the near future. While commodity prices began more volatile, the average exchange rate between oil and gold remained much of the same in the 1990s as it had been in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. Okay, So we're going to start to see much more inflationary pressures that you all know. This is historical facts. This is coming our way. Fearing the emergence of a species gold-based economy separate from central banking and with the correspondence threat of collapse of the U.S. dollar, 
the U.S. government approved several changes to trading in the COMEX. These changes resulted in a steep decline in traded value of precious metals from the early 80s onward. Now this is where the part in the video from David Morgan Short Squeeze that I had done uh, some weeks ago, this is where this first occurred, okay? Where he said, quote unquote, David Morgan was in a meeting with the CME group, CFTC officials, and some other individuals and himself. He, spe he said specifically something he will never forget that the commissioner had told him is that we merely enforce the rules in the comics. That happened in 1980. Okay, now this was rules I'm sure that were set in place before that episode took place. So in fact, the commissioner was telling him the truth. In fact, that the rules were already set in place in the comics. That once you have a beginning of a short squeeze situation in the paper traded price, not the physical. Physical is going to completely disconnect from paper. We all know that. But I'm just simply telling you historical facts. So at that point in time, that's where the... Comex only initiated sell orders. No more buy orders were coming in. Initiated from the CME group and the exchanges, or they can and they can completely shut the exchanges down. Also, so basically, as you can see in history, this is all very plausible to happen. It is from thirty-five dollars at a fixed rate up to nine hundred dollars. 69 to 79 is about 10 years. Now, I know you've heard many different people say about 10 years or in this next decade, we'll see this massive vertical increase in gold and silver occurring. Right? That's your historical facts. That's, in fact, saying that this is going to happen again. So the choice is yours. And uh, with that, I hope you decide to get into physical gold and silver. As you can tell, this video is more directed for those that are speculating on bit about getting into the physical metals, physical ownership in your hand, or the non-believers. I hope this helps you out a little bit. With that, I want to leave you this note. Here it is. Either you're with us, either you love freedom, and with nations which embrace freedom, or you're with the enemy. There's no in-between. Every nation, in every region, now has a decision to make. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. 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 The terrorists.